Hey there, I'm Emma from mm English. Today I'll be teaching you how to say 20 advanced colors in English. So you'll get to expand your vocabulary and learn some more interesting words to use. We're definitely going to skip over the ones you've already learnt at school. Red, green, yellow, blue. Mm -mm. We're going to use some advanced and more accurate descriptions of color in this lesson. You will get to practice your pronunciation, those tricky consonant clusters and syllable stress. And I've also made all of this available on a handy color vocabulary cheat sheet. So it's got all of the collocations and adjectives that I'm going to cover today, plus some extra explanations and examples. And you can download it right down in the description box below. This lesson is definitely going to help you to beautifully and accurately describe things around you like clothes, makeup, graphic design, nature, all of these things. So this vocabulary lesson is definitely going to level up your skills. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get this rainbow started. So I'm really excited about this vocabulary lesson because, well, I'm not sure, maybe some of my regular viewers have noticed that I've got a green screen going on in my studio, which means I can play around with the colors on screen and show you what I'm talking about in this lesson. So I can easily go like this and like this, and I can show you the colors that I'm talking about. Now, if your brain went, yep, that was white, that was brown, that was purple, you're going to love this lesson because I've got some much better, much more accurate words to describe the different shades of colors in English. Now, that is a great collocation to learn. We use the word shades to talk about different versions of the same color. You know, there are many different shades of yellow or different shades of green. And that is exactly how we're going to move through this lesson. We're going to focus on shades of the same color. We'll get started with shades of yellow and brown. So the first color is lemon. Lemon. So lemon is this pale yellow color. It's not quite as intense as yellow. In fact, this color is often referred to as canary yellow. So see the difference already? We've got two shades of yellow, but there's so much difference between them. This is lemon yellow. And you'll notice that many of these words actually reference the world around us, maybe food, flowers, nature. So watch out for these extra words throughout the lesson, these colors that remind us of something else in nature. So this is lemon yellow. Now this is mustard, mustard, mustard. It's a, a muted, darker yellow color, isn't it? Quite fashionable. So muted means that it's not bright or shiny. You can see that this color isn't as bright as the lemon color or the canary yellow. And actually, as I'm talking, I'm thinking that one of the really cool things about colors in English is that most of the time you can add a Y. So we could say mustardy. The new car they bought was mustardy brown. So it's really great if you're not quite sure of the color or the shades. You could say the clouds in the sky were a bluey gray or a bluish gray. These are ways to say that it's sort of that color a little bit of that color, a hint of that color, but not completely. Now this is tawny, tawny, tawny. It's this light brown to orange color. Now light is a really great way to describe colors that are not dark or strong. And it's often used when little bits of white or lots of white is mixed in with the color so it becomes lighter. And there are a few different ways to describe this. Another one will come up later on. But I want you to keep an eye out or an ear out for these 
other adverbs and adjectives that you can use to change the shade of colors in English. Next up, we've got bronze. Bronze. Now that's a really tricky consonant cluster there. It's just one syllable. That E is silent. Bronze. So bronze is this metallic brown color. And the adjective metallic is used to describe something that is shiny. So often the paint on cars has that sparkle, that shine in it. It's metallic. And funny enough, we use this color, bronze, to describe really tanned skin at the beach. So if you've ever been to an Italian beach in summer, you will see lots of very bronzed people. <laughs> now we have peach, peach, peach. Make sure you're really landing that last consonant sound there, that ch, ch sound. Exaggerate it if you have to while you're practicing out loud with me. Peach, peach. Good. So peach is a color and a fruit, of course, and it's this beautiful shade of orange, yellow, white, and a touch of pink. So technically, white is not a color, but it is so useful to know different ways to describe white because there are so many. Like this is pearl, pearl white. And it usually has a bit of a shine or a sparkle in it, much like an actual pearl. So it's that little rainbowy shine over the top of white. And pearl is often used to describe the really beautiful white of a car, not the flat white color, but the one with the little sheen of color through it. Um, pearl white teeth, very, very white teeth. And often makeup as well uses pearl white or pearl um, to describe that beautiful colored sheen. Now, this one is a little tricky to pronounce. How do you think this word would be pronounced? Beige, beige. So can you hear that j sound? It's not very common in English, but you do hear it in words like measure and vision. Zh, zh. So this word is bay, zh, bay, zh, beige, beige. So I would describe beige as a pale, dull brown color. It doesn't pop, it doesn't stand out, it's not bright. Interestingly, you can also use this word as an adjective to describe someone's personality. It's definitely not a positive adjective to describe a person like this because it means that they are dull, kind of boring, they're a bit beige. Then we have cream, cream. So cream is a mix of a little yellow and white. And of course, it references the cream that we use in cooking. So you can imagine that, right? A cream that you would add to your uh, pasta or dessert, right? It's inspired by that color. And this is ivory, ivory, ivory. So ivory has a little bit more brown. There's a stronger tint of brown than cream because cream is white with a little tint of yellow. This is white with a little tint of brown, right? So you can see the slight variation here and how useful it is to be able to describe color shades like this with slightly different variations to have different words to describe it and be more specific. So now let's talk about shades of red and orange. We have auburn, auburn. Auburn. It's the same vowel sound as or in door, door, auburn, auburn. So you can hear it has two syllables, auburn. And the first one is the stressed one. The second one reduces to the schwa, auburn, 
Auburn is this rich red-brown color and it is most commonly used to describe hair. Do you know anyone or can you think of anyone who has auburn colored hair? So this is burgundy. 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 It's a deep red color with really strong hints of purple and Deep is a really lovely word to describe a strong, dark color. It's often used with dark shades of red, green, uh, blue, even purple. So we use deep to describe that, like the deep, dark depths of the ocean. It's that really, really deep, deep blue. So we use it with some darker colors to add that extra extra, stronger meaning than just dark. Let's talk about some beautiful shades of pink now, starting with coral, coral. So as you can see, this color is a blend between bright pink and orange. You remember me speaking about bright colors earlier, right? We often use bright together with a color to talk about one that really pops out. So we say bright pink, bright yellow, bright orange. Speaking of bright, this is fuchsia. Fuchsia, I love this word. The spelling makes it really difficult to try and pronounce, right? But if you close your eyes and you just listen to the words that I'm saying, the sounds that I'm making, it might be a little easier. Fuchsia. Fuchsia, fuchsia, fuchsia. Fuchsia is this vibrant pinkish purple color. And you can use vibrant to describe a color that is really strong and lively. It's sharp, it's intense. So vibrant, I'm sure you can guess, is the opposite of muted and dull. Okay, so vibrant is very full of life. Now magenta is also another fabulous shade of pink. It's quite similar to fuchsia because it's blended with purple. Magenta, magenta. So we've got three syllables there. Can you hear where the strongest stress is? Magenta, magenta. It's on that second syllable. Magenta really is like this hot, pink that has this tone of purple in it. It's really bright and intense. Like it might almost be burning your eyeballs a little bit right now, I hope not. <laughs> Let's go through some shades of blue and green now. Starting with teal. This is teal. So it's just one syllable and it's this lovely blue green color. Very calming, teal which is different to aqua, aqua. So in English, the name for this bluish green color is aqua. And that color is very similar to aquamarine, which is this bright greenish blue color. A little different. Notice how I said bluish green for aqua and greenish blue for aquamarine. This quite literally is the definition of the difference between the two of them. They're very similar in color tone, right? One is a little more green, the other is a little more blue. They're similar, but not quite the same as turquoise, turquoise. So it's another really tricky one to say if you're just looking at the word, turquoise. Again, turquoise is a mix between a brilliant blue and a brilliant green. Now, the adjective brilliant means that it glistens, it shines. It reminds you of shallow water on a pristine tropical beach, doesn't it? Right? Ah, oh, just imagine that. So instead of saying, look at the stunning blue water, you could say, look at the stunning turquoise water. Much more impressive. And then we've got emerald, emerald. It's this really vivid green. Now vivid is a great way to describe a color that is really strong and it's bright. It's 
vivid green. That's a really great collocation to learn. Vivid, vivid with a color. It must be a bright color. Vivid and vibrant are very, very similar. Let's talk about some shades of purple. This is mauve, mauve. So mauve rhymes with stove if you want to practice. Mauve, mauve. And it's quite a beautiful color, um, a light violet or a light purple color. But it's not quite as light as lavender, lavender. Can you say it? It's got three syllables. Our stress is on the first syllable. And lavender is a light purple color. It's a mix between pale blue and pale red. Now, I've mentioned pale a few times already through this lesson. It's an adjective that you can use when you want to describe colors that are softer and lighter and they're less intense. So often it means that they've mixed with white and become lighter. But pale is another way to describe light. So that's it. I hope this lesson brightened up your day a little or at least made it more colorful. <laughs> and now you've got 20 advanced English colors, adjectives and other collocations that you can be using when you're describing the world around you. In fact, I have a short homework task for you. I want you to stand up and walk around if you're at home, at your office, wherever you are. See if you can find each one of the colors that we went through in this lesson. They exist everywhere around us. Don't forget I created your color vocabulary cheat sheet. It's got all of the collocations and adjectives we went through today, plus some extra explanations for you. You can download it from the description box below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out this next lesson right here. I'll see you straight in there.